With Resident Evil 7, 2, and 3 Remake coming to the PS5 and Xbox Series S and X this year with visual enhancements and new features, these games are already backwards compatible, but these games are coming with new features and as I mentioned, visual enhancements. They are on last gen already if you guys do want to pick these up. And to top it all off, if you get them on PS5 or Xbox Series S in the future, and I'm talking about if you have the disc or if you have the digital version and you want to transfer it to the PS5 and the Xbox Series S and X version, you will be able to do it for free. Resident Evil 7 and 2 are great games and are outstanding games in its entirety, but out of all the three games that I have mentioned so far, Resident Evil 3 is kind of looked at as the black sheep. Resident Evil 3 just had so much potential for good reasons. The original is considered to be a masterpiece to some people. Resident Evil 3 Remake was just about 6 hours long at most, such a short game. Additionally, some reasons why it was the way it was and it was so short was because some content was just missing from the game. One scene that a lot of people talk about and a lot of people hate Capcom for is cutting the clock tower scene, and for good reason. The original had the scene where Jill is knocked out and Carlos has to take her to the clock tower. He, he puts her on something and he has to go look for a cure. Instead of that, in the, in the remake, he has to uh, put take her out to a hospital where he puts her on there and he's looking for a antidote. Not antidote, but the uh, cure. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much without spoiling too much. <laughs> but personally, I think Resident Evil 3 Remake's biggest disappointment was Nemesis himself. He felt weak, didn't act right, and was a big letdown pretty easily. And to top it all off, was killed so easily. So to sum it up, Resident Evil 3 was pretty disappointing to me and a lot of people. So we can agree, it was pretty disappointing and it garnered so much negativity that the team working on the RE4 remake, who are the people who made the RE3 remake, were leading development on RE4 until they were taken off and replaced with the team who made the Resident Evil 2 remake. I'm no developer or someone who works closely with games. I do admire people's talent and you know i love the people that work on games and i admire their work because games aren't easy to make man and especially if you're going to make something that it will revolutionize a franchise like resident evil 4 and to remake that game and get taken off of that project is pretty heartbreaking i'm not even gonna lie i imagine those developers are pretty frustrated and pretty saddened by that so the main point that I want everyone to know in this video is why not add the Nemesis edition to Resident Evil 3 when it comes to PlayStation 5. Now Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil So I go on to say that there's a Nemesis edition and that is essentially the director's cut of Resident Evil 3. It restores all of the missing features that it had against the original and it adds the scrap content that Capcom did not add. That is pretty much it. It was leaked a while ago. Now, was it fake? We still don't know because it was coming from a lot of credible sources, but to this day, we will never know. I doubt Capcom will ever speak on it, but yeah, back to the video. Seven are great games in its entirety, and they are really good. They have a lot of content, and that's something that I think Resident Evil 3 just didn't have. Adding these missing features and missing content would really boost the game for them. I mean, to think about it, people would probably go back and actually buy the game alone just to play this. I mean, sales-wise, they would do astronomically, <laughs> right? And, well, it would give back to the fans. I mean, a lot of people were disappointed that Resident Evil 3 just did not receive that kind of love that Resident Evil 2 and 7 did. And, well, since it's coming to backwards, or not backwards, it's, since it's coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, and if you have the games already, it's free, so you can transfer over your data and everything. But if you know, if you're barely a beginner to the franchise, you can get these games and why not have people experience the real Resident Evil 3 in its entirety. I don't know, I just thought that would be a good thing to have. I mean, there's a lot of things, there's not a lot of content that's being uh, dropped for Resident Evil. Apparently we're supposed to be getting some news 
next week but yeah guys that's pretty much gonna have to wrap up today's video i hope you guys definitely did enjoy one thing before i do end off the video there was a director's version of the game apparently according to leaks and it had the missing features cut content and core features and that would be the gist of it. Now, please take everything I said in this video with a grain of salt. Nothing is confirmed, but this was backed up by a couple of credited sources. And I'm going to say why I think they didn't release this was because they just wanted to leave it how it was. I think it was too late for them to come and fix the issues that they already had plagued the game. Why not just add it at the beginning of launch? Why did they cut it? I mean, there's a lot of reasons we can go into detail with, but just for the sake of this video, I'm not going to ramble too much longer. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. My, pretty much, my point is, why don't they add this missing features, content, and everything I've stated so far into the new version that they're going to be releasing for backwards compatibility. Or, not sorry, not backwards compatibility, but for the pretty much the next gen upgrade. Other than that, guys, that's pretty much going to have to wrap up today's video. If you guys did enjoy and you guys want to see more YouTube videos, please drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much. Peace out.